From the Community Media Center in downtown San Rafael, this is the Jefferson Award-winning TV series, The Recovery Station. I'm your host, Nick Morhatch, and I have the CEO of Alcohol Justice with me tonight, Bruce Lee Livingston. Thank you so much for coming tonight, Bruce. Great to be here. I really appreciate it. And uh, we're going to talk about the blood alcohol level uh, and driving impaired, drunk driving. Bruce, I wanted to ask you about a video that you brought with us tonight so we can share it with the viewing audience if you want to let them know sure. what it is. Sure. Well, we have this video on our website as well. We're going to show the audience tonight. And it's about uh, the release by the National Transportation Safety Board of a uh, study and a request to the nation to lower our blood alcohol content requirement um, for drivers so that we could have uh, a lower level of, uh, of drinking and driving at 0.05 BAC. That's great. We'd like to share that with everyone. I know it's a very powerful video. After nearly 30 years of stagnating rates of alcohol-related highway fatalities and injuries, the National Transportation Safety Board NTSB, has called for a reduction in the illegal blood alcohol concentration per se limit from 0.08 to 0.05 or lower in the U.S. to save lives and prevent injuries. Alcohol Justice strongly supports this change. When we look at drunk driving in this country and we look at the number of fatalities, I think a lot of people think this is a problem that's been solved because they've heard so much about drunk driving really for decades. But it, in fact, it hasn't been solved. NTSB Chair Deborah Hersman, recognized as one of the nation's most visionary and passionate safety leaders advocating for safety across all modes of transportation, had this to say. This is a huge problem. 10,000 fatalities every year. 173,000 injuries and 27,000 of those injuries are debilitating life-altering injuries. The toll is really just too high and we can't afford not to do something. We made this set of recommendations and interventions to bring that number down to reduce the crashes, the fatalities and the injuries. Each year, drunk driving accidents cost the U.S. $130 billion. That's B for billions. While the pain and suffering of the families affected by these accidents are hard to measure, what can be measured is the strength and courage of a government willing to reduce the grisly numbers. We know that drivers are significantly impaired at 0.05. There is no debate about that. We lose on average of 10,000 people to impaired driving crashes every year. If our government is really interested in saving lives, all they have to do is look to other countries. Australia, Austria, Denmark, France, Germany, Israel, South Africa, Spain, and many more have already adopted a .05 illegal BAC limit for driving at the urging of leading medical, highway safety, and public health organizations. Japan, Poland, Norway, Russia, and Sweden have an even lower illegal BAC limit of .02 to .03. As you have heard, it's been 30 years since states began adopting the 0.08 BAC limit. Since then, however, the percentage of fatal crashes involving impaired drivers has not improved. It's time for a new national campaign and a new consensus to lower the illegal drunk driving threshold to 0.05 BAC or lower. Numerous studies from around the world show that once every state has adopted the new standard, we will save from 800 to 1,800 lives, reduce thousands of injuries, and save billions in costs, all without any appreciable increase in enforcement. Yes, it's time for the U.S. to join the rest of the world in adopting a lower legal level of alcohol-impaired driving. As the NTSB has shown, we will be in good company when we do. Organizations supporting illegal BAC limits at 0.05 per se or lower include World Medical Association, American Medical Association, British Medical Association, European Commission, European Transport Safety Council, World Health Organization, Canadian Medical Association, Center for Addiction and Mental Health, 
and the Association for the Advancement of Automotive Medicine. Please join these organizations and Alcohol Justice in encouraging elected U.S. state and federal leaders to adopt .05 BAC as the new standard to protect health and safety on our roads and highways. Go to alcoholjustice.org to take action now. That was a great video, very informative. I'm really happy that everybody can benefit by watching it. I had some questions to ask you, Bruce, about the subject matter. Sure. In the U.S., we've had a .08 illegal BAC level for 30 years. Big alcohol says that it has worked just fine and crashes have been reduced. Why does the NTSB and Alcohol Justice believe we now need to go to t the tougher standard of 0 0.05? Thanks for that question. Well, 30 years ago, Utah was the first state to pass that uh, 0.08 BAC. We went down from 0 0.10. So this was a great improvement, and slowly every state has passed that. The last state was Minnesota in 2005. But we have not made progress since 1997 in reducing drunk driving um, injury and death and the number of incidences of, of, of crashes. Um, and by the way, we do call them crashes. These are not accidents. Um, uh, they're, they're collisions or crashes. Uh, we think that people have some responsibility in this as well. Uh, but one thing government can do is it can control the standard. We have, like I said, we have not had progress since 1997. The level of injury and death has not been going down. Um, we need to go to what other civilized countries have done throughout the world. Uh, only 21 countries are still at 0.08 BAC. The rest have been moving to 0.05 BAC, uh, 0.03, or 0.01, or 0. Now, by BAC, I mean blood alcohol content. We're talking about the level of, I believe it's grams per deciliter of, of uh, alcohol, ethyl alcohol in your blood that is tested. We have the technology currently to test people at 0.05 BAC. And we're strongly recommending with the NTSB, they've re released another batch of major studies around this and have gone out on the hustings and said, let's make this a standard in the United States just as it has become a standard in almost every European country except Great Britain. Um, we have it as a standard in uh, Germany, France, Italy, Turkey, um, Australia, New Zealand. We are making this a worldwide standard to move it to at least 0.05 BAC or less. In California, it's 0 .1, 0 0.01 BAC for youth and commercial drivers. Uh, for uh, transport, it's 0.04 BAC. We already have people on the road that have tougher standards than what regular automobile uh, drivers have. And we should lower that standard in California and throughout the rest of the country, state by state. I agree, we need to do it. How many lives would be saved and injuries prevented if the standard was lowered to 0.05 in California? Well, that's the science question. I don't have a good study for California alone, but I can, I can make an estimate for you. Uh, the, uh, the NTSB, when they announced uh, their research and made this recommendation about a month ago, uh, they said that uh, it's somewhere between 800 and uh, um, 1,600 um, lives would be saved per year uh, nationally. So you could expect um, 800, I mean, 80 to um, 160 lives saved in California. But also quite a number of injuries would be prevented and quite a number of accidents would be prevented. Uh, currently in California, let me go back to a study we did uh, a, a number of years ago. It's 2005 data, but at that time we estimated there were 1,144 traffic deaths uh, from DUIs in California in 2005. There were 187,000 incidences, that is collisions, that involved DUI at the 0.08 level. And there were 63,000 injuries. So that's at the 0.08 level. We think there's a broad spectrum, that's what the, show, uh, the science is showing, there's a broad spectrum of prevention at uh, moving to 0.05. That means that 
people who have been drinking very little, uh, who are a smaller percentage of the overall death and injury uh, that, have been, that are at the 0.05 level, they will be deterred from driving. And also the massive numbers of injury and death which occurs with people that have 0.15 BAC, that means they're very drunk, very inebriated, they also will be deterred uh, from, from uh, drinking to that level or from driving after drinking to that level. So uh, we think that a lot of that injury, death, and uh, the number of collisions will be reduced in California. As I said, it's somewhere in the range of, of 80 or 90 deaths and um, up to 160 deaths or more will be prevented each year. These are conservative estimates. So we could have much more uh, prevention than what we're talking about. It's worth the cost, the additional added cost and the additional burden on drinkers uh, to not be drinking and driving uh, and then con continuing on. Absolutely. And if all states adopted the lower limit? Well, again, I mean, that's the national statistic. Uh, it's going to be, I think the fight is going to have to be state by state. That's often how change in um, alcohol consumption and alcohol regulation takes place in the United States. It's very much state-based. Uh, we have a national leader in NTSB, also the AMA and a number of other transportation safety groups have said do this. So uh, again, the national studies show uh, along the order of uh, eight or 900 a year in, in uh, injury, uh, in death prevention, up to um, 1,600 a year of uh, prevented deaths and tens of thousands of prevented injuries and accidents, if yes. not more. So there's a lot of good stuff that could come out of this and uh, helping people live longer. And of course, youth are more at risk even than, than adults. The youngest drivers are the most at risk and get in uh, many more of these accidents than older people. That sounds good. The opposition has called the NTSB proposal ludicrous because it will criminalize social drinkers and not stop chronic drunk drivers. Why does alcohol justice disagree? Well, I believe the opposition that you're referring to is, it calls itself the, uh, the American Beverage Institute. It's basically the people who, uh, who, who sell alcohol. Um, it's not just any beverage, it's alcohol in particular. And to call it ludicrous, I think that's a little unfair. Now, I think there was a deal cut 20, 30 years ago uh, nationally. It involved Mothers Against Drunk Driving and the alcohol industry and many others and uh, to set it at 0.08, to move it down from 0.1 and previous to that it was 0.15, if anything. Um, but it's a new generation and there's been a lot of car carnage. There's been a lot of dead bodies on the highway. Uh, this is the most traumatic thing that can happen, uh, a traffic collision that involves a fatality or serious injury is a bloody, ugly affair. That's the ugliest thing a sheriff or a policeman or a, a state highway patrol is going to see, and they see it every day. And uh, we have a whole generation of young people, young adults, and uh, older adults even that are that are um, that are victims of this. Um, we have uh, we're much more aware now of binge drinking and um, chronic heavy drinking than we were 30 years ago. We just talked about alcoholism back then. Now we talk about binge drinking, and uh, which would mean drinking a lot in one setting or getting seriously drunk or inebriated, as uh, the common person might say. And um, we're, mu uh, we're much more aware of that it's time to set new standards and uh, make a difference for this generation. It's a tougher standard now. 0.05 is what the rest of the world is doing. We need to get on board with that. Absolutely. I can only think of Mexico, Canada, and Great Britain of uh, countries that we're normally familiar with that still have loose standards like this. But it's even hard to compare uh, with Great Britain. There's not as much driving there as there here is here. And Canada, province by province, they've been making a difference. It's not a national law, but they're making a lot of difference in every province. Pro uh, uh, in Canada. So um, we can do that here in every state. We can start with California. We can start with wherever a legislator wants to make a difference in people's lives. Absolutely. Public opinion seems to be against the change and a lot of people are saying it's just a way for local governments to increase DUI fines and revenue. 
Is this true? I don't think that's true. I think public opinion will uh, favor this. Uh, the surveys in the past have said people don't think that it's appropriate to, for people to be driving after two or three drinks. Now, depending on the size and gender of the person, this could be one to four drinks would get you in the range of being at 0.05. Um, so um, is that social drinking? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, uh, what is social drinking? That's something the Mever American Beverage Institute talks about. But I'll tell you, you know, go ahead and social drink all you want. This is not prohibition. This is not limiting anybody's ability to have a cocktail. It doesn't limit, limit anybody's ability to have four cocktails. It just means you had better think twice or three times about getting in a car or any other vehicle and behind the wheel after you have those cocktails. This is not prohibition. This does not limit social drinking. It limits social drinking, if that's what the term is. I, I think that's kind of a made-up term. But it, it limits uh, drinkers from getting behind the wheel and killing themselves or killing other people. That's right. all it does. Why is the U.S. so far behind the rest of the industrialized world in tightening the standards for impaired driving? Well, I don't think Congress can accomplish too much on any given day of the week. Do you? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> no matter who's in charge in Congress. But why are we behind? Uh, I, I think actually we have uh, been creating a culture of alcohol consumption again that is unprecedented. Um, and it, again, be, I mean, we're drinking more than we did before prohibition. You know, uh, it's getting out of hand, folks. Uh, we have an industry, an international global alcohol industry. At Alcohol Justice, we call it big alcohol, as many other people do. Uh, it's dominated by Anheuser-Busch InBev, a company out of Brussels that's controlled by Brazilians and Brazilian money. And it's controlled by Diageo, which is out of London, an international spirits and wine uh, and starting to buy a beer uh, industry and uh, Miller Coors, which is out of Canada, includes Molson Coors as well as Miller out of South Africa, and it's based in London. These three global international corporations uh, control what we think about alcohol in this country, and they control Congress, and they control Sacramento as far as I'm concerned. Every year they're chipping away at alcohol laws in, in California. So we think that uh, people are, are they're being inundated on the internet, on the airwaves, um, you know, and in movies. Uh, you're serving liquor in, in, uh, or beer and wine in a lot of theaters now. You're seeing it in every movie. Uh, it's a culture that promotes consumption of alcohol because of these corporations spending billions and billions of dollars each year in this country and throughout the world to create new markets for alcohol and make everybody think you have to be drinking. A third of the people in this country do not even drink. Absolutely. And at least another third, if not um, more, are very, very responsible drinkers. And a very few people uh, abuse alcohol, either whether it's binge drinking or too much heavy drinking on a regular basis, or uh, you know the relatively few, 5% or less, who might be alcoholic. Um, we, but it is not socially acceptable to kill people either by murder or violence or driving, um, you know, or suicide uh, from, that's from alcohol. Those are preventable. You know, what we, the harm from alcohol is preventable. And impaired driving, that's what we're going to call it at 0.05 BAC, that is impaired driving. I'm not going to argue over whether you're drunk or not at 0.05 BAC. But after that one to four drinks, depending on your body size, you are too impaired to drive. And you right. should not be driving. And that's a standard we should be setting in every state and Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, and it should be a federal standard. Absolutely. How will a change be implemented in the U.S.? You just stated it. Well, change comes through uh, citizen act activism. People need to uh, contact members of the assembly members of the Senate. They need to contact their Congress people, their representatives in the House, and their U.S. Senators, and the Governor. And uh, one thing you can do, uh, go to the Alcohol Justice website, 
uh, on the right hand side, upper right side, uh, right under the donate button, and that's okay too if you want to donate, but uh, right under that is the take action button. And you can press that button and you can send, depending on your address and zip code, you can send a message to your local representative and it'll go right up the food chain of uh, politics. And you can tell them it's time to take action to save lives, especially the lives of young people who are most at risk from uh, impaired driving. So taking action, and we're gonna see what we can do. Get it on the airwaves, um, you know, uh, have town hall meetings about this. We're gonna keep talking about it. We're gonna look for other allies, see if we can convince mothers against drunk driving to get on board instead of running for cover on this one. Technology is not the only solution, you know. Um, uh, this is what we need the we viewers need a to lot do. Of to go to the website and push the change through in California. This will help alcohol justice. Now, I noticed that Ireland wasn't on here, and I'm not trying to make a joke. <laughs> we have cultures out there, Russia, that vodka is part of their culture, and Ireland, drinking, Great Britain. Great Britain has a point zero eight. Right, uh, let me clarify that. Um, as I remember the map, and uh, there's actually a great map on uh, the Wikipedia website, just uh, Google Wiki BAC, and you'll get to the, uh, a very good uh, section of that uh, online encyclopedia uh, describing what's going on in the various countries. Um, uh, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and England, uh, I believe, at 0.08 BAC. I mean, there's a lot of technical details in that, but I, I believe... Uh, so Northern Ireland, which is Ulster, would have a 0 0.08 BAC. I believe Ireland itself has a 0 0.05 BAC. I see. Um, so they have been moving in the right direction. Um, but, um, you know, I don't have the map entirely memorized. Uh, but the trend has been very, very strongly. Nobody is raising the blood alcohol content. The science, hundreds of studies now, are very clear. You are impaired after one drink. There's different levels of impairment. Perception, reaction time, ability to think clearly and make quick decisions. They are impaired as soon as you have one drink. As soon as you go over 0.02, you are impaired. Um, there's a lot of good argument for 0.03 being the level, and all, many countries have moved that direction. We're recommending right now for the next 10 years, fight to get 0.05 in every state and uh, you know territory in the United States. Let's get to that level, move uh, down the road here, and get to what this generation needs to do. So yeah, cultures that have to be uh, uh, smart about this, yeah, there's many uh, countries that need to be smart. Um, we were talking before, you mentioned Russia. They're moving very strongly in the right direction. That's They're good. taking a stand, and it's a country where um, alcohol is the number one uh, cause of preventable death. Here in uh, the United States, alcohol is the number two cause of preventable death. And it's not part of our culture. Tobacco. Alcohol is not part of our culture. Not we, everybody's. We, we make no. a lot of different alcohol products in the United States, but does one really have to celebrate with champagne? They can buy sparkling apple cider. Absolutely. You walk into the grocery store and there's big signs, buy six bottles of wine and get an additional 30% off. All right. This we is big it. alcohol with their mega money pushing their weight and giving the incentive to the public to sell their product. Yeah. And they'll yeah. do anything that it takes to get that message out there. They don't care about who's going to die. Am I right, Bruce? Uh, well, I don't think they do care that much. They care about their profits. And uh, we don't have to have, uh, accept a culture where you have to be drinking uh, to have fun. Um, I've, I saw an excellent um, ad campaign in Thailand. Uh, they actually have an excellent uh, nationally, they, with an alcohol tax, they fund a public health organization, uh, a national organization to fight uh, alcohol consumption or overconsumption. And they have an excellent ad campaign that says, don't buy alcohol gifts. Most alcohol sales, you know, are in um, November and December. 
uh, people give them as gifts for Christmas. You don't know what to do, I'll buy a bottle of B&B for my friend for 20 bucks from Costco or Safeway. You know, we don't have to do that. You can give them champagne. You can give them something else. You can give them a gift certificate. You don't have to do that. We don't have to promote that. When you go out with your friends, you don't have to be drinking. I'm not saying you should be dry. You don't have to be. I'm not dry. Never, I'm from Wisconsin. Believe me, I'm not dry. Everybody in my family uh, drinks, but also many people in my family have been alcoholic. And uh, it doesn't have to be that way. We can control ourselves. Um, so in no way is this prohibition. In no way is this a, a, a party killer, you know. But the one buzz we've got to end is the buzz of people drinking and driving, and uh, we've got to go to that, uh, let me just stick to that topic, we've got to go to that lower level, you know, and, and reduce that. And um, the fight is just beginning, and it unfortunately it is going to be a fight because there are many groups uh, that work for the industry that are going to be fighting against this. The and they'll be saying, well, we've got the technology, uh, ignition interlocks, and well, .08 is good enough, and well, it's... It's uh, uh, kids who don't listen to their parents, and it's people who don't have common sense. But it's not. We can regulate. We, we require seat belts. We could just as easily require 0.05 BAC. Let me ask you this. Uh, do you foresee a petition with enough signatures and then a bill being sent to Sacramento to implement this 0.05 in well, the state of California um, in the I next 12 months. Yes, I do. Uh, not necessarily a petition, but I definitely see uh, uh, we, we have been talking with uh, members of the legislature. They are very interested in moving this forward. And that, this cuts across uh, party lines. You know, Democrats and Republicans can get together on this one. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a great cause. I know that there's been a lot of alcohol deaths in many families uh, throughout California. It's uh, the number one killer of people, alcohol-related deaths uh, and hazards was uh, up in the $38 billion a year for the state mm -hmm. of California. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we can do something about it, that would be fantastic. At this time, I wanted to thank my guest speaker who brought a video that the whole Bay Area will enjoy that's on their website. God bless you, Bruce. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you so much. And great show. Stay tuned to our next pro program. Thank you so much.